Okay, so I hope everybody's doing really well. I thought it would be funny to bring back some coffee testing, but today is threshold and speed, the importance of that, how to start including some speed in what you're doing, how perhaps you can, you know, combine sessions like I'm about to do, gonna do it on the treadmill, which helps build a level of control, which I'll also talk about. But let's try the coffee. Oh, I tell you what, I like that. Even though I don't think I made it perfectly, but I'll give that about an eight out of 10. Let's crack on and get the Jordan's time. All right, so got my bag packed. We're gonna head to Jordan's town as per usual. I have about 18 bags that I need to load in the car, so what do we think of that wig? Isn't it crazy that <laughs> for a while I actually wore this wig like somewhat seriously? I suppose I was in denial about the whole uh, losing my hair thing, but yeah, we're making our way down to Jordanstown. We made it to Jordanstown. I'll go have a little look, see what's going on in the lab, and sometimes there's kind of like indoor activity, so I might have to warm up outside. I know, dreadful, cold, windy, we'll deal with it. But let's go see what's going on inside the lab. Oh, and my hair managed to fall out. <laughs> All right, so lab is looking spectacular quiet in here I'll go look and see what's happening out there and, and that'll dictate whether I warm up outside or, or in here but I'll show you around the lab a little bit um, and then I'll get stuck into some treadmill work so yeah okay so let's let's talk about a few things I came into the lab it's it's really windy and, and wet outside um, this kind of threshold work where you're trying to keep the lactate under 1.5 to keep it under 1.5 is difficult enough you could say just because the level of fitness required to run at fast paces but keep that lactate under 1.5 it's difficult so what I probably like to do is if I can help myself to be able to run quicker because at the end of the day A to B as quick as you can wins the race well then what I'm going to do is come in the lab like today so I can go a little bit quicker there's also a greater level of control so here's how it would have played out on the windy road path had I been going down the road path I'd have been probably going pretty nice and quick with the wind on my back and then I would have turned to come back to my bag to check lactate and get a drink, that sort of thing. And probably due to frustration because of the wind, I'd have picked the pace up on the way back. And guess what? The lactate probably would have creeped up. I know I've talked about don't get too obsessed by lactate, but it still serves a purpose to move your physiology forward at the end of the day it's still very very important it still plays a massive role in the sport if you can increase what speed you can run at with a lower lactate what running under 1.5 does is gets the body that's roughly where your first inflation point would be so you've gone from i could do this all day to as it starts to creep up higher and higher to 2.8 4 6 9 15 how long you can run at those lactates without you know stopping because you're tired and you've ran out of fuel etc well that time goes down so as lactate goes up time to exhaustion goes down when you run at that you've seen at the end of the warm-up the lactate was like 1.4 so by keeping it under 1.5 we haven't left what, what I would call baseline okay so it teaches the body to run at quicker speeds while being very efficient at, at using the lactate as fuel and buffering the lactate. So just because 1.4 or 1.5 shows up on the device doesn't mean that that's how much lactate in your body you're creating. So you might be creating 10, but you're able to buffer most of that. And so only 1.5 shows up on the device. 
So I did a lot of three minute efforts. I, I varied the pace because I've just came back from altitude. There's, there's a bit of tiredness. I didn't know exactly what pace would be under 1.5. So I tried to push it up to as quick as possible, you could say, but keeping it under 1.5. And then if I went a bit too quick, well then I had to reel it back in. So it kind of went, 17 kilometers an hour, 18 kilometers an hour, 19 kilometers an hour, 19.5. Found out that that was a bit too quick. So then I kind of went back to 18 for, you know, a couple, and then I could go back to 19. So it kind of stays at 1.5 the whole time. So actually recycling paces like 18, 18 and a half, 19, it's not that big a deal. You're just trying to spend as much time in that really good zone as possible. That's the really important thing. I use the mirror in front of the treadmill so I can kind of watch my technique, where, how's my arm carriage, etc. We know it's not fantastic. I look like a T-Rex when I'm running, but that's kind of the benefit of the lab. What I would advise you could do at home is find a loop or, or even a treadmill. You don't have to have lactate. You can use things like heart rate. I wear the stride foot pod so that there's other data coming back and, and I think one of the data points is LSS which is leg spring stiffness and I think they correlate that really closely to running economy so you can start to see at what pace is maybe your economy is improving in other words just find a controlled environment come back to it every now and again and see how things move forward I weighed in <laughs> I might need to go on a little bit of a diet you'll, you'll see me holding this thing I've talked about this before, they don't sponsor me, I just bought this myself. When you're in the lab, look at me, I'm sweating, it's roasting. Sometimes you want to stop because you're just so hot, right? And I know that by using this is kind of cheating because when I'm outside, I can't cool myself down holding one of these, especially in a race. But when you're in a lab and the lab's like 23 degrees Celsius, I don't want to ruin the speed or the effort because I'm just overheating. So in between some reps, I would hold on to this. Sometimes I took 30 seconds rest, sometimes a minute, but I basically just got around, I think I did 16 times three minutes. Yeah, 16 times three minutes. So that's a big chunk of time in that really good zone. So I'm really happy with that. Now I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna do a couple of those sprints that I talked about just to speed things up a bit. Had I not used this, had I not been cooling that core temperature down, I wouldn't have wanted to go outside right now. So I've done that, I've cooled myself down as best I can. Good session. Don't really know what it means in terms of like 18, 19, where's the lactate at? We'll know over the next few weeks. There should always be a balance between I'm training by science, but then sometimes I just go out the door and for example, what I should do in probably like maybe a week or two or, or knowing that I'm back from altitude and that the jet lag's gone, maybe in two weeks, I should just go to the park, run at race pace and see how does it feel? Where am I at? How many miles at the minute could I actually run at a good enough pace that would qualify me for the Olympics? So science is awesome. Science can be logical, but sometimes the races are won in the psychology, and that's what we've talked about before, that capacity to endure wind, rain, outside, no hand cooler between reps, etc. So hopefully the sprints go pretty good, and then I'll, I'll wrap things up and, and start to head home. Okay guys, so look, that's a, that's a wrap on today. Uh, I've just finished a bit of a cool down. Sprints went good. Be careful with sprints as in build, build them into your program over time where you start with strides. At the end of a run, you do maybe a couple of 15 to 20 second efforts, even uphill to get rid of some of the pounding. Then you can transition to the flat and then you can kind of go from 80%, you can kind of go from 80% speed to 85 to 90 up to 100. When you can improve the fastest pace that you can run at your top end, well, of course, everything else can improve also. So you don't want to be limited by not being as quick as you personally can possibly be. You might not be as fast as somebody else, but this is still really important. On that note, don't get injured. I've done a full review on a company called Exact Health. And if you want to check out their app, I'll put the link in the description. 
this is where you're gonna to have to be really smart and think about what parts of my body break down. Are you doing the rehab that's gonna hurt, hurt? I really can't talk. Are you doing the rehab that's gonna help prevent those parts of your body from breaking down? It's so, so important. I cannot stress highly enough how important it is to look after, maybe it's your calves, maybe it's your hamstrings. These guys have a lot of rehab programs on there for free, let me tell you. So check that out get signed up before you're going to transition into maybe some like sprinting at the end of a threshold session like I did or at the end of a maybe steady run like my previous video or perhaps you're just going to do it after an easy day. Super, super important to improve that top end speed but also very important to look after the body. Do me a favor, like, subscribe. I'm supposed to say all this stuff at the start of the video when everybody's still watching but like, subscribe, do all those lovely things. I also have the running school if that's something you'd like to check out. Training plans, recovery stuff, strength stuff, psychology stuff that we know is so important. There's 60 hours of tips, 60 lectures, 12 hours of tips, apologies, but that's still a lot. Good luck if everybody gets through that and your running knowledge will be through the roof. Take care, thanks so much for watching, bye bye.